Hi there, this is the first uh, dot product engineering example. And uh, basically, we'll just start off with uh, little Mark's little sign that he put in Florida. So, here's the problem. Mark decides to start with a marketing campaign for his company. He decides to put his first sign on a coastal highway in Florida during hurricane season. Well, some things to note is that the force of the wind is a thousand, po uh, thousand pounds at the center, so right there. And uh, if the rope is designed to withstand 707 pounds, what is the least amount of rope Mark can buy to support his sign? Okay, so first of all, let's just realize that, uh, you know, that I'm going to only look at it in 2D since it's going to be symmetric, okay? So let's do that first because that simplifies things. And actually, I think for this problem, I'm actually going to... Here's your sign. Um, I'm going to do just more of an intuitive approach because I feel like I've always been doing this vectorial stuff when uh, most of you will probably find the intuitive much easier. So let me just do that approach this time. This is the, uh, I'm going to just call it the R, R wind. And then you have your up to here, which I'm going to just call R, R, R rope. And then you're going to have some arbitrary point over here and a rope going to it. Sorry, arbitrary point over here. <laughs> okay, so then realize that we do have a triangle and that uh, there is an angle that we probably will need at one point, but not necessarily. Um, realize that the force does, the force of the rope does go along the rope only. So this is force rope, but also realize that there are components, x and y components, which I'm just going to call f of x, and f of y. And I realize that f of y would be shoving, if you applied that force, say, like, right up here on the top of the sign, what that is, is that's the force that's being, that's pushing the sign into the ground more. f of x is actually contributing into the rotation about this point, about our the base of our sign. It's actually contributing into the rotation. So the basic idea of the intuition is that we essentially don't want this thing to rotate. So for that to happen, we need the force, the rotation due to the force wind, and the rotation due to f of x, right here, to cancel each other out so it equals zero. So let me write that out. The rotation due to the winds is going to be force wind times the moment arm, right? We're able to do that because fw, the force of the wind, is perpendicular to the axes, uh, to the moment arm, okay? The moment arm is vertical, and the, mo and the force is horizontal, so it's kind of like that. So anyway, that equals, now remember we have 2, hmm, I'm trying to think here, yeah, 2 times FRX times our RR, right? So let's put some numbers in, that way we don't uh, get all lost, that's a thousand. And RW, now that is half of the 20, half of the 20 and 15 up, so that's actually 25 feet. And this equals we have two of them times FRX. We don't know exactly what that is, but we do know what RR is. That's 35. 
So we have to solve for FRX. Okay, so FRX, when we solve for that, equals 357.14. You're sitting there going, okay, so that's the force on that's the force in the x direction so what does that mean well let's just bring it on up here and I'll remind you of something essentially our layout is going to have to be f max cosine that angle that I pointed out down here is going to equal the FRX. Okay. Now to find the limit, to find the limit, the to bring the rope up to its maximum capacity. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this FRX into this equation and solve for it. Also, so I'm going to be plugging in this, but not only am I going to be plugging in this, I'm going to take plug in this as well because each rope can handle up to 707 pounds and what I'm seeing is FRX is that uh, essentially it's 357 in the X direction only so we have to figure out essentially at what angle does this become true so anyway let me plug in some numbers here you have 707 pounds right cosine alpha equals 357.14 you're sitting there going, okay, well, that's hard to solve for. No, it's not. It's not hard to solve for. You just divide the 707 over 357.14, divide by 707, and actually what you can do is you can solve for alpha by taking the inverse cosine. You don't necessarily need to do it this way, but you you can, and, and I think it's a very straightforward way of doing it. So what you find is your alpha will equal 59.66 degrees, which is great. So then you have to go and you say, okay, well sine alpha, let's take it back to just the geometry portion, right? Sine alpha is going to equal opposite over hypotenuse, right? Well, we don't know how how long the hypotenuse is because that's how long the rope would be. So I'm just going to say that's going to equal 35 over x because we don't know what the hypotenuse is. Well actually we do know what alpha is now because we just solved for that so I could have put 59.66 degrees in here. Now you're realizing that essentially you're solving just for 59.66 degrees. You're solving for that length. The length is going to equal 40.6 feet. Which, remember, you have two ropes, so times it by two. Um, Mark should have. Um, Mark should buy. Um, essentially 81.2 81.2 feet at the minimum and basically this kind of um, intuition uh, seems a little bit different than what you were doing with the cross products but the reality is it's exact same procedure you're just um, the dot products and the cross products and all that, they, that just deals with it for you. But if you're able to see what portion or what component of a given force is going to contribute into a rotation, say to a certain axis, then a lot of the time you can just um, pull that force out and simplify the problem and save yourself a lot of time so anyway let me run through another engineering example there's not many um, 
I don't really want to do a 3D example for this one, but uh, I'll do another engineering example just for you guys. So have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.